our 7s are ground pinned. Inputs 9 and 10, output 8. Inputs 12 and 13, output 11. Our 14s are VN pin. Okay, our 7404, our hex inverter. There's six inverters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in 1, out 2, in 3, out 4, in 5, out 6, 7s are ground. In 9, out 8, in 11, out 10, in 13, out 12. 14s are V in pin, okay? Versus, excuse me, a uh, 70, let's just, let's do this. 74 LS, let's just stick with the ones we're using. 0, 0. Versus a, let's just grab this guy, 74 HCT, 0, 0. What's the difference? Well, this is our low power shot key. This is our high speed CMOS TTL compatible 7400. The same thing. It's just using different technology. The pin out and pin in diagrams are the same between a CMOS and a TTL. Okay. So let us talk about. Can we talk about pin configurations? Oh, let's talk about performance characteristics of these guys. Last thing before we do that, let's talk about the gates. Sorry about this, guys. Um, what are the gates? What are those? So remember, 0, 0, and AND, 0, 4 is a not. And again, you're going to use these a lot more so that it becomes second nature to you. Our 0, 2 series, or excuse me, our 0, 2 gates are our NORs. That's quad 2 input NOR. 0, 8 is a quad 2 input AND. 10, you should know this. You guys use this one. It's a triple 3 input NAND. And then our 11 is a triple three input and, and so on and so forth. There's a table on page 143, and you guys are going to be using these things and using them and using them and using them. And there's a map in there too, I think on page 144. So those are the map, also that TTL Bible up in the, when you walk into the lab on the left-hand side, upper, upper side there, you can use the pinout diagrams from that. Okay, let's talk about some of the performance characteristics. Okay, the performance character of his characteristics of a chip can be kind of broken out into these five right here. Uh, the first one is propagation delay time. The next one is power dissipation. And there's a subset to that, which is the speed power product, which is a combination of power dissipation and propagation delay time. Fan out the DC supply voltage and the input output logic levels. Okay, so let's talk about propagation delay time. And let's talk about this one in terms of an inverter. So remember, an inverter has an input waveform that looks like this, and it's going to have an output waveform that looks like this. That's only in an ideal world. In the real world, there's a delay. It takes some time for signal A to get through that gate, and it comes out signal B. So propagation delay, it looks like this. So doesn't look really different, but check this out. This signal A changes over right there. It takes some time for signal B to catch up to it. This little tiny, tiny, tiny window here of an incorrect result for B, that's known as the propagation delay time. As we talked about earlier, your standard TTL has an 11 nanosecond propagation delay. The high speed, um, the F series, has a 3.3 nanosecond delay. So you would expect a faster chip, i.e. the F series, to be able to have, to have like a, a tinier window between A and B, where it's giving an incorrect result. So B is still the inversion of A. Here's A, here's B, but you got to realize it takes some time. So that's what a propagation delay time. The more propagation delay time on a particular chip, when you read it from the uh, from its data sheet, you have to realize it's a slower chip. Okay, power dissipation. Okay, power is a super important thing to consider when you're building, you know, large large microprocessors billions and billions of transistors in there. Um, you know, for a fixed function integrated circuit, yeah, you're dealing with six uh, inverters, you know, for an example, for a 7400, but you have to consider now 
like a large number of these things. So what is power? Basically, oops, that's red. I want to go in black. Power is again is equal to voltage times current. So what we do is basically our supply voltage. In this case, a TTL would be five. And then we take our average current, where there's a current when the when it's low, and there's a current when it's high, and then divide that by two. That's our average current. And you can look up this current right here on a uh, on your data sheet. But this power dissipation here, you know, it's going to be, um, you know, for TTL, uh, it's going to be six milliwatts per gate. Um, for the F series, um, ALS series is 1.4 milliwatts of gate, uh, mil, milliwatts per gate. So which is using less power? It looks like the ALS. Which one's faster? The F series. You have to take that into consideration. More power, but faster. Less power, but slower. Okay. Uh, speed power product. All that is is that's a quick way of judging the performance of the ship. It's taking your power. Uh, times uh, basically your propagation delay. So it gives you an idea of how much energy you're using. Because remember, energy, script W, is equal to power times time. So that's what the speed power product. It's a measure of both the propagation delay and power dissipation. Okay, fan out. How many devices can this guy feed? You know, so here's my NAND gate, and I'm going to feed out bazillion inverters. You know, that just goes on and on and on and on and on. Not going to happen. There's a there's a practical limit to it. For TTL, it's like 20. Um, so you can drive 20 gates because other because there's a microscopic amount of current that's coming out of here, and each one of these inverters is taking a microscopic sip of that microscopic uh, current, but eventually you're going to run out of it. So TTL, there's a limit, probably about 20. DC supply voltage, how much, so that's fan out, that's how many gates you can drive. Uh, DC supply voltage, is it 5 volts, is it 3.3 volts? Um, you got to realize, too, is there's a range, too. CMOS, you can provide, um, you know, you can have a little bit more voltage uh, supplied to it. You can have a little bit less voltage. You know, you can have, because it's 3.3 for a CMOS, you can be down to 2 or up to 3.6. TTL, you don't have that much window. You know, TTL supply voltage is 5 volts, and there's a minimum 4.5, maximum 5.5. So you got to look that up on the data sheet. Um, input and output logic levels, what are you going to get? What do you, what's your guaranteed output there? For TTL, should have your high guaranteed to be from 2 to 5. Your low from 0 to 0.8. That's the same thing with the input. Okay, so it's just a means of um, judging the performance of this chip. Okay, there is a couple data sheets on page 149 and 150. Take a look at those and just see what you uh, what you can come up with these chips here. Um, the uh, There's a wrong answer to in section 3.7 review. Number 10, uh, define V out, V O L, V O H. Um, I think it's, I think it just switches it. It's, I think it says V in. It's basically V output low is the correct answer for number 10. Um, the other thing about the data sheets, take a look through the TTL Bible on the left hand side of the lab, and it should show you exactly what you're dealing with. And again, these are all guaranteed. You know, yeah, your ship is going to probably produce a 5-volt output signal, but it's guaranteed to 